Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Welcome back to the homestead. Today, we're gonna to be talking about dry canning dry goods. This is a great way to preserve food for long-term storage. We're gonna talk about the steps on how to do that and the big controversy surrounding it. That's not really a controversy at all. If you're interested in learning more about homesteading topics, including becoming more self-sufficient and transitioning off-grid, stay with us here on the channel. Go down below, hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot of great information here for you. All right, let's get back to the canning. So let's talk about exactly what dry canning is. Dry canning is canning in canning jars, dry goods in a dry oven. Now you can pressure can dry goods, but I think it's kind of unnecessary because this method works for what we need it to work for. There's no need for a pressure cooker for these dry goods like beans, rice, lentils, or TVP. Now the purpose of dry canning is several fold. It is to preserve uh, dry foods from go getting stale. It is also used to kill bug larva, even bugs in there, and bug eggs. A lot of times when you buy in bulk from Sam's Club, Costco, those are pretty good. But if you buy in bulk from say some other type of store, you, it can have uh, bug larva in it. And we've had that here happen in our house. We bought a big bag of azuki beans from a big place in Houston and it came along with some critters and that was not pleasant. We had to fumigate half of our house to get them out. But this method will seal these jars and kill anything that is in your product. It can also be used to preserve and extend the shelf life of packaged dry goods like crackers. It's important to remember that when using this method to can dry goods, those goods, those dry goods must have less than 10 or 10 percent or less of moisture content in them. If you don't, you could have a problem with mold growth inside the jar. So stick with me. I'm going to talk about how to do this method in a minute, but it bugs me so much. I got to get this out first that people talk about this method as being uh, unsafe and it is not. And here's why they say that bacteria, including botulism, which is deadly, can grow inside of these cans. And that is not true. It is true if you have that higher moisture content. So I want you to be very careful. But all of these products that we are going to be canning are completely dried out. There's other ways to prevent botulism in foods that are alkaline, like beans. So here are some chickpeas. These are in a can, they come from the store, and they are hot packed and pressure canned in here so that botulism is not able to grow because botulism grows in an anaerobic or airless environment and it's got moisture in it and the alkalinity is high. So that's why these are pressure canned. You can also avoid botulism by brining things like olives. So this is sealed, but it's in a brine. So there's no possibility for that botulism to grow in there. Now, if you have a jar of jelly, the sugar content is too high for the botulism to grow. That's probably hot packed as well. I don't know if that's pressure packed. Uh, from the store, but the botulism also can't grow in a super high sugar uh, environment. So if there happens to be any botulism uh, spores that are present in any dry goods, just leaving them out for 12 hours will render them inert. Where am I getting this information? Ohio State University, UC Davis, and the USDA. So I think we're good. Now I want you to all be careful, so do your research first. So some have also said doing it this way will explode your jars. Well, I've never had one explode and I've never heard of one exploding uh, because you're not creating pressure inside of here to begin with. You're cooking these in the oven with the top off. And we'll talk about that when we get to the steps of how to dry can dry goods. So some also say that this will not raise the temperature of the goods inside above 212 degrees, which is the boiling point. Well, that is, <laughs> that is not correct. And here's why. The moisture content inside the dry goods is so low 
that you're not boiling any water inside that dry good. And this rice might darn near be down to zero moisture content, right? So if you have, say you're cooking uh, some potatoes in the oven, they have moisture in them. The inside of that potato is not going to get higher than 212 degrees. That's true. But if you put a dry good like these chickpeas, which I'm going to demonstrate for you, if you put those in the oven at say a temperature of 300, 350, whatever it is, they are going to reach that temperature. And it's important to know that because the botulism toxins or any other bacteria, even the bugs, are killed off at between 185 and 200 degrees. So this method uses 250 degrees as its standard. You put these in the oven, they're going to reach a 250 degree temperature. It's going to kill any bugs in here, and if there's any botulism, it's going to kill it too. So I will put a list below in the description of the most common things that you dry can and some things that you might want to avoid because they have some oils in them like seeds or nuts. It's not recommended to do those because those oils can hold moisture in and well there you go we already talked about that. So let's get to this method. Now you can see that this is a jar of lentils and listen I'll put it near the microphone. There's the top is sealed down. There's no popping of the top. So it has created a vacuum inside here, sealing it solid. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to kill the bugs with the heat, but we're also looking to vacuum pack it, essentially, seal it like that and get that vacuum so that it does not go stale. First things first, step number one, wash your jars and lids. Step number two, we're going to take our wash jars, we're going to place them on a a cookie sheet or in our case we've got these baking pans and you can place them down or you can place them up. Our oven is set at 250 degrees. We're going to place them in the oven for 15 minutes. Now the reason we're placing them in the oven to begin with is to sterilize them. They're washed, but they're not sterilized yet. The 250 degree oven will sterilize them. It will also dry out any moisture from your initial washing. Here we go. Next step is to take your jars out of the oven and fill them with your dried good. Now that can be done one at a time, which is what we do. And we'll just take out one jar here. So it remains, remains hot. Take it out. And we're going to fill it with our beans. We're going to use a standard canning funnel here. Fill it right up. We're going to place it right back in the oven. Take your next jar out, do the same thing. Now remember, just like normal canning, you want to leave some head space in here. You don't want to fill the jar all the way to the top. So you have that air gap that will create the vacuum to seal the top. Now let's talk about lids. We've got two types of lids. We've got the regular lids, the metal lids, lids that are ubiquitous, and everybody has these. We've also got these really cool Tatler lids. Now these are indefinitely reusable. So you can use these over and over and over and over again for your canning process. Unfortunately, as much as I love them, and they're even made in my home state of Michigan, we can't use them in, the process, in this process. And let me show you why. So there are two methods of sterilizing the lids. One is the old way where you boil water with the lids in it and you leave them in the water and then put them on the canning jar. We cannot do that now because we don't want to introduce any moisture into the environment of these dried goods. So we have to use the other method of sterilizing the tops and that is putting in them in a small uh, baking um, thing like this and putting them in the oven with 15 minutes left in the process. So 15 minutes at 250 is going to sterilize these as well. We cannot 
put these tattler lids in the oven like that dry. They will not survive. They're not made to do that. They're made to be boiled in the water. And I don't think they can withstand that high of a temperature, even though it's just 250. In the water, they're only reaching 212. So there you go. We can't use these this time, but I use these a lot and they're really awesome. As always, I'll leave a link to them in the description below. Okay, 15 minutes to go. Let's put our lids in. Half an hour's done, the timer just went off. Let's get these out of the oven and I'll show you the next step. We're gonna grab these out of the oven, one at a time. Set them on a towel up here on the counter. We're gonna take our lids out. What we're gonna do first is take a damp cloth and wipe that rim off. This is standard in any candy process, including this one. So we're gonna take our sterilized lid Place that on the top. Take the ring, also place it on the top. It's not that hot once that ring comes out like that. You can just hand tighten it a little bit. You don't want these too tight. Use your oven mitt and just crank it just a little bit and you're ready to go. Let's get the rest of these out of the oven and do the same process. Well, that's it. That's the last step in the process. You will hear these tops pop down like you do in a normal canning process and that's when these vacuums are uh, being created and that top is popping down. We had one 12 pound bag of pinto beans and that filled up nine quart jars. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and go check out this video here on how to can pears.